Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Brr-ra-bop. Welcome to the Endless Hip Hop Podcast. I thought we changed the format tonight. Mm, I'm good. No? <laughs> How you doing, old Tashi? I'm just trying to like not like I'm just trying to be nice to you and my oh, family. Oh, thanks. That's really sweet, hon. You know, I find it easy to be nice to you because I like you. Now, I am in a good mood. You are in what? I don't know what. Well, I don't know. We just got into some fights today and I think I just need like, you know, it's it's a uh, there's no release in the pandemic. I found release in the form of an Oculus Quest. Oh yeah, you've been you've been working up a sweat in the Hell yeah, man. In the room next door. I can't recommend it enough. Let me say this first of all. There's no feeling of manhood and virility and alpha maleness quite like clicking in the eyeglasses extender into your <laughs> Oculus Quest 2. Well, I heard you and like you were you were in your office and you were making all this noise. You accidentally hit the door. I did unfortunately punch And you were sweating and well, panting. Let me tell you the good news. I did hit the door. However, I also, I fought a two-round boxing match, and uh, I was in the red corner, and guess who the judges called it for? Hmm. Shaboy. Wait, there's judges when you knock, when you get into the Oculus Rift? Well, it's a, it's a boxing game. Oh, God. And uh, I knocked the guy down a couple times, and I won the match. And better, best of all, I broke a sweat doing it. And I'm, well, I'm thinking, this is the perfect way to exercise in the, in the pandemic. I know you broke a sweat because I tried to record me opening the door to find you. You were trying to humiliate me. <laughs> I wanted to get it on video. You can't humiliate an alpha you male. making all that noise, grunting, and you wouldn't have seen that I opened the door. Yeah. And I thought in. that would be so funny, but you had just taken off the set. Yep. Got to work on that timing. That's what I learned in boxing. I thought maybe I could bribe you with it. Well, look, I got the Oculus and this is actually pretty funny, but I got the Oculus because our next door neighbor has been doing like unbelievably intrusive construction for like a year. I mean, and it's while like, we're all working from home. Yeah. And it's just like reached a fever pitch this week. It's like it's so loud. It They're, happens. It's not their fault, but it sucks. But it sucks and they feel bad. And so they got us a gift guilt. But the funny part is like he contacted me. He's such a cool guy. He contacted He's a guy we did karaoke with. And he contacted me. He's like, do you have an Oculus? I want to get you something because I feel so bad about the construction. And it is so funny to me that our neighbor got us a gift for a couple that he's that he's ruining the lives of. He got us a gift that he got, he's he got to know that the at least one half of the couple is going to absolutely hate and be nauseated by. Like It's like when Al Bundy used to buy Peggy Bundy a bowling ball for her birthday and be like, oh, you don't want that? I'll take it. It's like, why not? My friend, I told my friend I got it. And he goes, did he get Natasha a gift because he felt guilty about buying you an Oculus Rift? Yeah, I you asked me to put it on today and I just felt this overwhelming sense of like repel. Like it, it just felt <laughs> repelled <laughs> repelled by it. Like I was like I'm going to put it on you after like this. Like the opposite of a magnet. Like it just kind of needed to oh, I, I think I closed the door. I'm going to bring you upstairs after this. I'm going to lay you down and I'm going to put the Oculus Rift on you. Oculus Quest 2 actually <laughs> is what it is. Sounds hot. Well, look, you humiliate me I talk as much shit as you want, but today was a very fun day in Oculus Rift land. Although I did just play the roller coaster game and I felt a little ill and felt like I was going to fall down. So, you know, not every game is uh, not every game is fun. Well, I think that um, we're doing pretty good considering, although today um, we got into a pretty big fight. I didn't think it was that big of a fight. Maybe our maybe our viewers and listeners could weigh in. Mm-hmm. The podcast viewers. Can I viewers? say my, my point of view of what happened? My side? <laughs> sure. I'd love to hear it. So every Although, day, wait. Before you say it, I do want to warn you that I'm an amateur boxer with a 1-0 record. So you might not want to go too aggressive. You're an amateur boxer. You're, you're a professional boxer when it comes to... Uh, repartee verbal repartee verbal repartee so probably you will win this one but i would just like to say every day around 12 30 motion i work from home and I'm, i am always very concerned about his lunch and what he's gonna eat and if he's okay and you know i like him to be fed and he likes us to eat lunch together and all of a sudden i smelled this like spaghetti dish at like 
eleven fifty nine, mm. and you had reheated all the leftover pasta that you made that was amazing. You're such a good cook. You made spaghetti bolognese or appreciate spog you. bowl as you spog called it. Bowl. Appreciate you for that. Much it's, it was to my a, chagrin. A you chicken it spog that. bowl. It was delicious. So he came upstairs and was just decided he would eat the leftovers by himself. And then I hear from the other room. <laughs> It was like Lucy, Lucy and Ricky. She's like, <laughs> "Is that the bolognese?" <laughs> I didn't say. It Are like you that. eating the bolognese? I was just. I was more like confused mm-hmm. that you would just like heat up a pretty large portion for yourself and not even ask me if I wanted some because I would have never done that. So that kind of put me in a bad mood. Hmm. Okay. Well, how's what's your version of how it went? It was twelve thirteen, not eleven fifty nine. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Burned in my brain. Um, what my version of the events of today of the the great uh, the great Spog Bowl controversy of twenty twenty is that you? Are you sure people call it Spog Bowl? Because that's dumb. I do think it's dumb, and I do think people call it that because I've been seeing that for some reason. It's been coming up on the internet recently, Spog Bowl, oh and I don't think God. I made that up. I really think that that's a thing. Okay, it's a zeitgeist thing. Okay. Uh, you told me last night. Hey, true or false, Tosh? I'm going to be busy with work calls all day long. I'm going to need you to put the kid down because I have back to back work calls. Right, what, but is that, it, yeah? that is true, okay. but people need to eat during their work calls, especially <laughs> when they're home. You kind of need to eat more than usual, right? Because right? you get like low blood sugar. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, as a professional uh, pro-am boxer, I have to car- I have to carbo load before I go into a big match. But so I wasn't thinking of your work calls as that taxing. However, at about 12.10, 12.10, I began to be hungry but you were on a work call, and okay. I didn't want to disturb you. So I decided I would make the Spog Bowl, of which there was only one portion. And I heated it up, and I started to eat it. And I thought, you know what? My wife can probably make lunch on her own when she catches a break. She's an adult, and I think she can make a lunch. You do present your case pretty nicely. However, I will say... So I'm in there slurping. Mm-hmm. sucking on down some noodles like Lady in the Tramp. But what were you going to say? I was going to say, I think if the situation was reversed, you would have felt pretty bad that I was just reheating all of this amazing food and eating it for myself. That is not the case. I would not have felt pretty bad. I would have been fine with that. However, if you the argument you should be making right now is if the situation were reversed, would you have done that? The answer is probably not. You probably wouldn't have eaten what if i'm making the argument i want to make okay then i will refute it and i will have to knock you down much like the uh fighter from saint petersburg today in the oculus rift uh boxing game um the other and i know our listeners are fascinated by this because there's no way this isn't an incredibly compelling story that we're telling (laughs) wait we're not done with it yet the other detail here is okay the other detail is pretty bad oh wait Oh, I haven't gotten to the fun part yet. Okay. There was, in fact, only one portion of pasta available. There was not lunch for two. There was lunch for one. And I decided I would be that one today. Is your spaghetti bolognese my favorite food? That is true. Okay. Just checking. Okay. Yes. You present you present your case well. Yeah. So what did end up happening was I she be, Natasha began to uh, say, why are you eating without me? And I did run into her office, give her all of the pasta, say, here, you can have it. And she started <laughs> running after me with the bowl of pasta saying, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm disgusted by this. And I ran into my office and dead bolted the door. And she started banging on the door saying, take it back. I take was it back. serious. I know I did. I took it back and finished it. It was really good. Are you sure I said I'm disgusted by this? You said something to like, you were trying to emphasize that you didn't want it. And then I was like, you, I wasn't accepting that argument. And you, so you started to like expand on the idea of not wanting something, which was like, it, it actually repulses me. I actually, I don't want it. I, I'm, rep- I'm, I'm nauseated by it. I, and I, I eventually. I made I took- you take it back. And then I finished it and I was really glad you gave it back to me, to be honest. And then I came upstairs purposely to ask you a question <laughs> while I was holding my disgusting turkey sandwich. No, no. Just so no. you'd feel bad. No, that isn't what happened. You came up with a sandwich and you, and you were like, 
I was, I think uh, maybe I wasn't paying enough attention to the sandwich because I was just like, I figured like, like most people, you were just eating a sandwich. I didn't realize it was a, it was a spite sandwich. And, <laughs> and you were like, well, I'm just going to go into the other room and eat my ham sandwich. And I was like, wait, we don't eat ham. Like that's, I go, I'm like, ham? You have a ham sandwich? It just sounded worse than turkey. She switched out meats because she thought it sounded like a worse meat. But it was, we don't have ham. I'm like, ham? She goes, no, well, it's turkey. I <laughs> went into the other room and ate your I turkey. just wanted to make sure you saw me eating that sad I, sandwich. It's just a sandwich. It was like cheese and mayonnaise. Lunch isn't important. To me, what's important is dinner. <laughs> dinner, we had a nice dinner tonight. You're right. We had a little bit of pizza. We had some salmon. It was fun. It was nice. We had right. some olive oil cake. All's well in the Legero Casher household. You're right. Am I? Yeah, I'm sorry I got angry and pounded on the door today. Well, listen, the best point we made while we've hashed this out over not just the podcast, but the, the whole day, is I will acknowledge that you would never have done that. <laughs> Thank you, you would never have fixed the Spog Bowl for yourself and just macked on it. I will so, say that you're pretty lucky that your main issue is me is that I think about you too much. That is a, that is a good, a qual- as they say, a quality problem. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry I didn't ask you if you wanted some Spog Bowl. Please don't say that, though. Would you rather? Here's a question Wait, for how you. do they spell spog bowl? I, I S-P-A-G-B-O-L. Bowl. Bowl. They, they do bolognese. They shorten it with B-O-W-L. No, no. B-O-L. B-O-L. Yeah. No, let me spog ask you. Bowl. Let me ask you what would you rather. Okay. Would you rather me have fixed it for you and been like, you know, do, 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 put a little sprig of parsley on it and like a, a, a long stem rose and a, and a, a afternoon glass of Chianti? right brought it up for you you know and put like a checkered tablecloth down and been like my wife i'm working you're working so hard i just want you to have a little bit of a spog uh, spog bowl but i i the problem is i say spog bowl the whole time and for the rest of my life so would you rather get the pasta right from a loving husband who always says spog bowl or have me just eat the pasta and not think about you at all totally inconsiderate but i say spaghetti bolognese you know what Spog bowl's kind of growing on me, so oh, no. I think I would have liked the <laughs> okay. meal. Well, Tosh, I'm sorry we had a uh, frictional day, but I got some good news that's going to make your uh, mind rest easy. What? I, I'm thinking about getting a new RV. <laughs> so that's good, right? I'm thinking about selling my old one and getting a different one. Let me remind you of the rules of our house. We have a one RV maximum, and you can't buy one and then like try to be selling the other one just so you know that's one of the rules we have well we'll see what we can do all right well listen moshe i think we should take a call i agree with you and i would like to do that i feel like we've aired too much of our our dirty spog bowl oh this is a couple this will be nice because then it's a couple in one of the covid capitals of america (laughs) let's give a call Make ourselves feel a little better about ourselves. Chris and Carolyn in St. Petersburg, Florida. Here we go. St. Petersburg. Hello? Chris? Carolyn? Yeah, hello. Guys, before we get this call started, I have some really cool news to let you know about. All right. You guys live in St. Petersburg, Florida. Is that right? Yeah. Well, this is going to blow your mind. But today, I had a boxing match with a virtual um, boxing avatar on my new Oculus Quest. And guess where the boxer was from? Saint, wait, wait, wait. St. Petersburg, like Russia. A- <laughs> is this an actual person? No, or is it like- no, it was a... It was a, uh, 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 Moshe a- plays with bots all day. Yeah, it was a bot. But- like, okay. Like Mike Tyson's punch out. It was very similar. But like similar. way more pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> By himself with some goggles in a room nice. where he's like shoved the carpet to one side of the room. Well. And moved his, pretty- his chair. Anyway, and I don't want to offend you guys as residents of St. Petersburg, but I knocked the guy down pretty hard and I won the match. Yeah. Um, so Carolyn, uh, we haven't heard you talk. Can, can we just make sure we can hear you okay? Oh, yeah. So I'm right here. There Sorry. you are. Um, okay, cool. So, what's going on, guys? Uh, well, we um, we we have a three-year-old and a 
six months old. Okay. And this isn't like exactly Get a divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to work. Uh, okay, yeah. so a three-year-old and a six-month-old. Yeah, and we, you know, it's not exactly a relationship issue, but we're trying to navigate sort of the Santa issue, kind of particularly in relationship to our families and our daughter's future school friends. And um, we don't really want to lie to our kids, but there's this giant societal lie about Santa. So it feels like a lot of pressure to, um, you know, to continue it. And last year, I remember, Moshe, you were like, you told your kid that uh, it was Uncle Morty when she saw Santa. <laughs> that's right. I remember that. <laughs> um, and, um, I mean, presumably that's not going to, like, continue. And we know since you're um, Jewish, but Natasha has Italian family, kind of how you're dealing with it a little bit. thought you might have some helpful are, perspective. Are you guys both Christian? Or of Christian well, descent? I mean, our families are. Right, right. Um, well, this is actually something I've been thinking about recently because my daughter, who's two and a half, loves celebrations. She's obsessed with Halloween, and I've been trying to get her off of Halloween because it's been over for almost a month. Yeah, she's so, still <laughs> deep in the Holly, Halloween She game. talks about it constantly. So now I'm trying to like transition her into Hanukkah, and boy, that is a sad transition because it's just, <laughs> there's like, I had to Google... I had to Google cartoons about Hanukkah and like four uh, things came up. One of them's like Nina's World season two, episode 27. <laughs> then there's like another one that's like season four, episode three. Like they're like very specific. And then you start uh, watching them and they're just like, and then the rabbi had to get a, a eight days worth of co- oil to make the latkes and to put it in the light. That's how all the women are talking in it yeah. most. Well, I'm not liking the accent, Natasha. I'll no, it's honest. not my accent. My accent, I'm just doing an impression of the show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it's just not that exciting. So I actually, I'm kind of torn because I used to love having a Christmas tree and like having a theme to it. Like I didn't like a yeah. traditional Christmas tree. I'd be like, okay, this, this year it's just going to be pink or something. I don't know. I just like the idea of making something artistic and having it live in your house and then getting a present on Christmas. But for me, what I like is like, take what you love from it. Like if you love the tree, like right now, Moshe and I have like, he's let me get boughs, mm. you know, like those boughs. Yeah, we, we deck the uh-huh. halls from time so, to time. <laughs> so that at least I can have that smell. And then, but I have to say, I, we watched that Greta Thunberg documentary last night called I Am Greta. And I know this seems like adjacent, but it's kind of connected. And she was really saying like, I, you know, I grew up in a consuming household and, you know, like now her life, she's like, you know, she's like, now I, I, I don't buy new things. And like, I'm not, I know that's very extreme, but it's like, don't you hate when you've got like six unopened boxes of crap you've ordered and there's just like life is just becomes about like where can I shove this crap who needs more crap you know and I think that's a very important thing to teach your kids like it shouldn't be like so disposable and like always getting all this dumb new stuff I don't know no we definitely are on that end of the spectrum but we were like a little worried are we going to like deprive our kids or deprive our parents you know of that sort of grandparent experience of being like oh Santa's coming soon I mean mm-hmm. I personally always found it like my parents kind of abused that like starting <laughs> November 1st they'd be like Santa watches everything that you're doing um and and like used it to like make me be good which we're not interested in doing mm-hmm. but like now they just want to be like Santa's coming that kind of thing and that is so annoying. Bad. Santa is gross. Santa's gross? Yeah. He's like some like <laughs> weird man at the mall who's like has a job once a year and probably pisses Wait, himself. And Natasha, you, that's, those people are Santa impersonators. That's well, not the, what do you think Santa is? He's a man that lives in the North Pole. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you, what are you guys saying right now? <laughs> um, I just, I yeah, just I don't think, think it's... I mean, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Moshe? You didn't well, grow up with Santa. Well, I wanna, I wanna listen to uh, what, what, what is the, what, what's your alternate plan here? I mean, if as a, as a Jew, I'm like, okay, if you were a Jew, I would say, well, you have to just tell them the truth because the, the one of the great, the only winter pleasure of Jewish children 
is destroying Gentiles uh, children's <laughs> belief in Santa. That's the only thing we get in the holiday season that's fun because Natasha's right. When it comes to uh, uh, stacking up Hanukkah versus Christmas, Christmas is like so much better of a holiday. It's so good. It's like magical. There's like, it's sensory. Yeah. It's and what do we like, have? Candles know. and donuts. But, the rabbi um, said we need to get more corn oil. Well, it's, pa- pan- it's potato. It's potato based holiday. Um, so that sounds fun so wait I, what I'm curious about okay you guys you come from religious families but I mean by the way Santa has nothing to do with religion exactly it's right. more like about mm-hmm. the right Right. so you come from kind of like traditional families but you guys are kind of less non-traditional right right are you guys believers are you guys like religious believers at all no what do you say when they ask about God we haven't gotten there the six oh, month yeah. old hasn't asked you about God yet <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Okay. Okay. Touche. I mean, my, I guess my point is like, I doubt that you guys are going to be like there, you know, there is no God tell your friends. Right. I I mean, we want to be respectful and be like, some people believe this thing. So Um, I, I, I feel like you could probably take the same approach with Santa is like grandma and grandpa you know, believe in, in, in Santa Claus. And we're not sure. We just don't know. But, um, but, but it's hard, Moshe, because like it's like a big, it's like a big thing that kids believe. You're right. This is hard. Maybe I'm glad I'm Jew, a, a Jew now, <laughs> because it's stupid. Like, and that's and something. Car- it's Carolyn up to them like, to teach the kid about it. What did you say, Carolyn? Is what? You know, a scientist, and she's like totally unwilling I, to. Yes, it's true. I have this really difficult. I have. I just cannot lie to her and tell her that jolly large <laughs> older man slides down the chimney well wait a minute carolyn and, it's not it's not <laughs> abrogating your responsibilities as a scientist <laughs> to play, to play a, a fantasy game with your three-year-old about saint nick <laughs> I, I don't know it's a hard uh, the details are hard to believe well, yeah. sure but i mean have you brought scientific method in, in no, into the but, t- like, she's, a, she's like a very she asks so many good questions right now. She's a, she understands so much. She like puts information together. So um, you know, we we look up information together. So for me to say all that stuff, it's like very challenging to just be on the end of the spectrum. I like I I've been thinking about it. and I don't think I can do it like with a straight face. No, you, I, I you do. Kind of have to arrive at like the conclusion. You know, it's like oh well, he makes it around the world. All in one night by magic. Magic always seems to be the sort of like final conclusion with discussing Santa once kids start pulling so out. Like, the- so like when your kid is like, uh, I'm a dragon today. Are you like, you're, you're not a dragon. First of all, there were no such things as dragons. Second of all, the closest thing to a dragon was extinct long before human life even appeared on this earth. Also, well, you're... you're- okay. Oh, you're, you're, oh, go ahead if you want to respond. Well, it actually just, it makes me think like our daughter plays pretend a ton, yeah. but whenever I engage with her, like she'll be like, daddy, here's a donut. And I'll be like, hmm, delicious. She's like, no, dad, it's just pretend. Oh, me too. So, so I, I have the, I have the same pragmatic so, daughter. Well, the good thing is, <laughs> yeah, so aren't, that's what I'm saying. aren't your kids like, like not in school right now? So they don't really have that influence. It's true. And I, also, me, I like, it's... yeah, I think that your parents, um, you don't yeah. want to take that away from them. But can't you just, like, yeah. not reinforce it? Like, can't you just kind of, like, let them have the Christmas at your parents, but, like, you don't have to ever bring it up or ever talk about it and just kind of, like, when the, when the kid talks about it and you can say, oh, yeah, that's just, like, a fun thing. That's Nobody fun knows thing. if it's yeah. real or not, honey. Well, but, but Carolyn is saying, actually... We do I have a PhD, <laughs> and we do know that it's not real. It's one hundred percent. I mean, here, here's my. I, I'm now now having thought about it for the last few minutes. I I do. I really do understand, Carolyn, what you're saying, and I'm like, I'm just grateful that I don't. I'm not. I'm not compelled by culture to keep this like b- bizarre uh, mythology going. This like not only the mythology about Santa, obviously, but then the mythology that it is uh, morally forthright 
to infuse your child with a sense of uh, this sense of wonder and that it's somehow abusive to take away the fantasy like that's also a mythology Mm -hmm. you know that we must Mm -hmm. believe that children need to believe in in fake things in order for things to feel magical for them and to take that away is to strip them of their innocence right but so but mm-hmm. you, so you're in a dilemma because you're like a practical pragmatic family and you <laughs> and you have a you have a society that's saying like pragmatism shouldn't apply to the winter season for some reason when it gets <laughs> cold we throw that out here's my thought i have a thought just like your daughter says no that's that's a pretend thing one thing you guys could do and i feel like this could be intellectually uh digestible for you carolyn is to say during christmas time a big part of Christmas time is playing pretend. And so we all pretend, okay. we all play pretend that there's, that there's, that Santa is bringing us, is bringing us presents and that it's magic. And some people, some people believe that it's, that he's really, that he really does that. So it's not, it's a secret to, that it's pretend. We don't talk about that it's pretend, but we, uh-huh. we, we, we apply belief. You know, we pretend to believe during Christmas time that Santa Claus is coming to town. And I'd like to take that one step further. I also disagree with Moshe. I think that maybe a mom's job is to create wonder. I think that's like kind of part of it. But sure. you know, you, I didn't say it's not. You don't have to do that if you don't want. You could just like, you know, I, feed I, and clothe her. And, <laughs> um, but also, you know, you could kind of, is there anything you do love about the holidays, the Christmas holiday, Carolyn? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that too. Is like uh, we could just try to discover what our what traditions we would like to create. Um, I personally just love um, celebrating. It. It's like a time for family for me. It's just being together with family, which is tough this year, of course. But um, we have each other at least. So that's that's the main thing for me um, about this time of year. And just emphasizing that with your daughter and, and, you know, whatever, maybe you guys will make cookies together or maybe you'll do, Mm -hmm. maybe Mm -hmm. you'll make a card for your husband together. I don't know what, buy a, buy a gift for this six month old or, um, you know, (laughs) whatever, whatever is the thing that you, or decorate the house. But specific to the Santa question, which. Well, no, but what I'm saying is she can, she can do what you're saying, but then maybe lean into the, to the traditions that might be fun for the three-year-old that right. are the new things mm-hmm. that you love. Right, right. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I used to always paint my own ornaments and like put them on my tree. And that was so fun with me. So if my kid was a, I was going to say, if my kid was not a Jew, I would like do that with her. <laughs> that seems like it'd be really fun. Um, but what we are doing, Carolyn, what we are doing is we're getting her a bunch of corn oil and riding it around the house. <laughs> So the wonder, the magic and wonder. Don't forget the dreidel. <laughs> no, but I, 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 yeah, I think what Natasha's saying obviously is right. Like finding a way to make the holiday season your own in your own way. Because you're starting your new family. You're like, you're not your old family and you're never going to bribe your kid with Santa Claus starting November 2nd or whatever your mom did. And <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Like that's something that, you know, you have to just like shake off because like, you know, mm-hmm. you're not going to do that. Yeah. What, how does any of this sound to you? I think it, I like it. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, 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 I think she can really relate to the pretend thing. Yeah. Um, okay. And obviously, you know, we do enjoy the season and I look forward to spending it doing fun stuff with our children. Um, but yeah, I think the pre- pretend, um, we'll have to like re-listen to how you framed it. But I think, I think that it made a lot of sense to, to, put it in the same terms that she yeah, exactly. discusses donuts or whatever. You just have to make sure she's not the girl in her class who tells every kid exactly. that there's no Santa, which I, I know. was. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but you know what you can say? Like, yeah, you can just say a lot of people like to play. It's really fun. And, and, and also I think in general, we should all be cutting down on the presence and the con- consuming. Well, here's what I was yeah. going to say. Speaking of uh, gross. We, oh, I know. I'm sorry. One more thing. I think another really important <laughs> thing to teach kids, especially at this time of year, like the main focus is like, how do we bring joy to people who need it? Or how can we maybe mm. help, uh, okay, help yeah. people in need? How can we make s- sandwiches for homeless people? Can we go yeah. volunteer mm-hmm. somewhere? I know it's COVID. So maybe you have to get creative. Maybe we can write letters to kids in need, like have a different activity. And I want to do that with my kid too. I think it's like, that's what you should ch- show them oh, that the season's yeah. about. 
t- well, I was just going to say, and I agree with it, what Natasha is saying, but I was going to say now, the more I think about you two, you guys do actually believe in magic and a world of pretend. Uh, Carolyn, you're a scientist and you live in coastal Florida that's going to be <laughs> underwater in like 12 years. So you got to have some suspension of disbelief, right? You believe in a fantasy land. <laughs> We'll be able to sell our house in like 10 years, right? You better sell it now. <laughs> you better sell it now and move to... Yeah, in 10 years, everyone's going to be looking for that land. Oh, uh, that hot land in, in, in Michigan. You guys move to the, the... Upper Peninsula. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan is going to be the only place left. And it's cold yeah. enough that you could convince her that St. Nick lives there. Um, from St. Nick <laughs> to St. Pete. You guys, I hope we helped. Okay, good luck, you guys. Uh, happy you. Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Mosh, that was really good advice. Oh, you too. I mean, it was interesting to me because it was like, it, it was so impassioned from you that I was feeling like, oh, wow, she, you've been thinking about this a lot because they were like, what do we do about Santa? And you gave all this great uh, thoughts about just how to infuse the holidays, the winter holidays with meaning, which is really nice, you know? Well, I forgot about Santa. That's stupid. I mean, it is stupid. And yet it's- Ho, this- ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> He's fat. He goes down a chimney. Like, it doesn't make any, any sense. And it's, you know, it just the whole thing just seems kind of like, like borderline perverted. I don't know. Just some old comes, jolly man. Who's eats like, your cookies. And he's like, sit on my lap, little boy. Again, that's the impersonator. Uh, the real Santa doesn't have you sit on his lap. Yeah, they do. No, not the real Santa. Oh, but the, also, the real Santa comes down, eats the cookies, leaves the presents. The sit on the uh, lap is the guy that works at the mall. Well, that's the only one I ever met. Well, I did. I met the real one, the real guy. Yeah, he was very chill. I have a question for you, Mosh. Yes. Can I get a Hanukkah bush? I just can't. Why? I'll let you do what you want. It's your world. You you're living in it. It just, just seems like a creative, festive activity. Like, I mean, our child's already made a menorah, and Hanukkah's in like twenty days. There's nothing left. To do. It's like my old friend Louis Katz had this joke. <laughs> he had this great joke about Hanukkah. It's a long, very funny joke. But one of the lines in it was like, of course, there are those Jews that get what they call a Hanukkah bush. Well, you know, we call those uh, fucking sellouts. That's what we call them. Really? Yeah. It's like this. Oh, I'm going to do. Okay. Here's my objection to it. Okay. And I'm not going to stop you from doing it because I don't don't even know what they look like. I just like to decorate a live thing that's in my house for like, oh, and then you keep the lights on. It just creates ambiance. Listen, there's no question that a Christmas tree is beautiful and awesome and a thing of wonder for children everywhere or whatever. And this whole idea, people go like, well, Christmas is more than a Christian holiday. No, no, it's like, it's for everyone. It's like to be that dominated by a religion of the, of the state that even a person of a different faith gets basically mimics the ritual of the holiday. No, you do your own version. But it's a ver- your own version of what? Of the a pagan sure. ritual that, has that is the folded, winter solstice. That has become folded into the Christian holiday that is Christmas. Okay, so, can I try it this year and see if you hate it? I do hate it and will hate it, but you can do what you want. I will not stop you. That doesn't sound very I'm not going to sneer at it and tell our kid, like, don't look at that. That's mommy's sellout bush. But if you're asking me if I want one, the answer is no. I'd rather us all play Oculus Rift together. All right. But you could, I will not, I will not. What if you got a tree and just put like fresh flowers on it? Isn't this a conversation? And like pink lights. Isn't this a conversation we had at the very beginning of our dating life? I don't remember. I do believe that at the very beginning of our yes, dating we've come life, come full circle. <laughs> you certainly have been talking like it. The very beginning of our dating life, I think one of the things I said was a non-negotiable was no Christmas tree. I can't. Oh, do you it. did. Yeah, I just can't. I think they're beautiful. They're for Christians. Uh, okay, but I'm suggesting um, like a really small thing that we could decorate okay i guess we don't have to do that we can do it you can do it you can do it i'll get a statue of vishnu as well and i'll light some incense for it i well that would be great that would be beautiful (laughs) it could be like a celebration of every 
of every religion. Like, what else do you do? Like, what a great thing to teach your kid. You could have all Vishna hanging, you know, you could have uh, Hindu gods, you could have, uh, what's Kwanzaa about? Kwanzaa, they, they basically do a, a Hanukkah, a, a menorah as well. So we're, okay. we're, we're pretty close. Candles, we could do like different ornaments, we could research some other religions and, and Just some pagan rituals. None of this, could... this is, none of this is, is, is my thing. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I just love making ornaments. All right, so then we could hang ornaments like on what? Honey, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'll let you do whatever you want. But when it comes to like Christmas light, it's always going to make my skin crawl. I love Christmas for, for Christians. Well, if anyone has any advice, like we just gave those people advice on Santa Claus. We should have called them back. Ask them what we should do. Can we call them back? <laughs> I don't think they can help. I think they'd have some good, good ideas. Okay, good fine. Call them back. Hello. Hey, you guys. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't stopped arguing since we got off the phone with you. <laughs> oh, for real? Well, your call oh. kind of like triggered me in a way. And I guess I just want to ask you what you guys think about this because... We want your advice. I, <laughs> I really want to be able to express myself even in a pagan way with the decor in my house and have it be seasonal. It feels like this fun shift to go into and it... You know, the trees smell good and it's such a creative thing to do with your kid to make the ornaments. And like, you don't have to like the when the day Jesus, you know, died or whatever, like bring out the present. (laughs) But like, wait, is that what you celebrate on Christmas is Jesus's death? (laughs) I'm a bad Christian. I don't know. What is Christmas? This is birthday. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. He was born. Okay, Okay. All right. Oh, right. The nativity scene. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I just wanted you guys to. To a- I wanted to ask you if you had any advice for us because Moshe said it's actually a deal breaker for him for me to bring anything. <laughs> I didn't say it quite like that. I said that early uh, on in our relationship, I told her a Christmas tree is kind of like a non-negotiable. I can't do a Christmas tree. It, it, I love them in other people's homes, but they make my skin crawl in, in, in my house because I'm, I'm not of that faith. I don't celebrate that holiday, even though Christmas has become more than just a Christian religion. So now Natasha's trying to get a Hanukkah bush, and she said, you know what? I think that they could help us. Maybe they would have some advice for us. So what do you think we should do? I feel like Natasha's advice, if you were giving yourselves advice, would be you know, just like try to embrace it in a different direction. Like, get find some other I don't know, get a lavender bush or something that smells good and you can cut things, you know, make, make ornaments for, it's kind of like, uh, I'm in academia and we, you know, we no longer say BC and AD. We say BCE and CE before right. common era. No, I thought that was era. before Christ ever. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, I didn't know, you know that. Before common era and common era. Common era. era. Interesting. Yeah. CE but doesn't quite still, have a ring to it, but, but it's still linked to Jesus's supposed birth, right? Mm. You know, so it's like you can't totally upend the way that we do dating, but you can kind of like take the Christ out of Christmas, or you know what I mean? It's, I'm mm-hmm. sort of mixing the two things. Well, you're just telling so you us to go like, to mass. You could be like, I'm a good, you know, I'm, I want to get some bush that smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get some bush that smells really good and um, create ornaments with my daughter. And obviously, anyone from the outside will be like, oh, this is just like a Christmas tree and an or- ornament, but kind of uh, meets Moshe's requirements while also kind of getting the same sort of excitement um that's that's what i feel the advice that natasha would give to a couple it's kind of hard to say no moshe to a nice lavender bush it is hard like statues of fish (laughs) on it it is hard to say no it doesn't feel very christian i i uh i i will not stand in your way i think that was good advice that was well given and i think that we can get a lavender bush (laughs) Oh, awesome. Or, or some good smelling bush. I love it. We could just get a marijuana plant. It's kind of like, you know, what you, were, you, what you were reminding. That's a great idea for our <laughs> two-year-old. What you were reminding <laughs> me of 
when you were saying like you know even though you say ce you're still kind of dealing with the christian calendar it's like the idea that there's no ethical choices under capitalism like you can do what you can but you're never going to be able to divorce yourself from the the basic system and so so the fact that we even celebrate hanukkah as significantly as we do i don't know if you guys know this the only reason hanukkah is this huge holiday is because of christmas it's basically because around winter time hanukkah is a pretty minor holiday in judaism but around winter time this gigantic major christian holiday was happening and so the jews were like well we got to give our kids something and so it became this much bigger ritualistic thing not that you didn't you lit the menorah and it was nice but it wasn't like it's hanukkah time like it was just a it's a it's a pretty Uh minor holiday so in that way Oh God, my skin is crawling already, but I will. Sum- <laughs> Moshe, I, will I won't let you down. Nothing will feel Christian. Yeah. All right. I, I I feel like it's like an exciting challenge to, um, kind of uh, meet Natasha's kind of hope for the season while also like not making Moshe's, Moshe's skin, skin crawl. crawl. <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah, Carolyn, you're my last hope here. You're the scientist in the family. <laughs> what do you think? I I. I'm glad I let him answer because I really didn't have a very good idea and I knew he would have a better answer than I have. I mean, I guess just finding somewhere to meet in the middle, like, you know, um, <laughs> so this bush talk is <laughs> very, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, I could, se- maybe I could set it on fire on Christmas day and say, I am the only true God. I am that I am. And so then she'll believe <laughs> She'll believe in the Abrahamic God and not ever be, the, uh, be tempted by, by Santa Claus or his cousin Jesus. Well, I know it's late there, and I'm glad you guys, we called you back, because you've been thinking about Christmas pretty deeply, so you were the perfect people to ask for this question. <laughs> and thank uh, you so much. Yeah, and thank we'll you talk guys. to you again, hopefully. All right. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I don't know why I told him we talked to them again. <laughs> well, well, let's call him back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now I am inspired. I liked what he was saying. Like, you know, like, let's take it in a new direction because it was a pay. Like, what did the pagans decorate their trees with? It certainly um, wasn't like. I think it was probably sat- sat- satanic symbols, evil, no. evil spells, incantations. I bet it was like pine cones and, um, you know, fling, uh, strings of flowers, garlands, garlands. I, virgins. I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited. About virgins. This. You know, you put the angel on top of the Christmas tree. They used to stick a virgin in the, by their asshole on top of a of a pine tree and kill it that way. Do you know that? No. You didn't know about that? No. That's. <laughs> is that yeah. a joke? It is a joke. Yeah, oh. it didn't really happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we could get on top of a mench on a bench. Mench on a bench. Isn't that the little Jewish thing that you put on your tree? I've never, I don't know what this is. Someone was selling it on Shark Tank. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go. I can't, I just. (laughs) I should just stop talking about it since you approved of a lavender bush. I didn't approve of it. I submitted to it. It's very different. All right, well. Um, What do you think? Should we play a couple of secrets or should we do another call? Oh, let's do it. Let's play a secret. Hi. (laughs) Hi. Uh, last year, my grandfather finally passed away after a long battle with uh, cancer. Um, obviously, my family was very upset, um, but I think they were also a bit relieved that, you know, suffering was over and, you know, all the things that you say whenever someone passes away after a long sickness. Anyway, at this funeral, um, I'm sitting in the second pew from the very front and I'm on the left side of the church and I am on the very last seat as far as you can go closest to the wall. My aunt is a sculptor and she um, made a sculpture for for the ceremony um, out of like rose quartz or like a peachy rose quartz and my grandfather's name started with a J and so the sculpture was in the shape of a J. Um, from my angle, it just looked like a giant dick. And, um, as, as the, 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 as it went more serious and, you know, a little bit more emotional, I was, um, beginning to laugh uncontrollably because all I could see was this giant dick in front of my grandfather's chest. <laughs> I was laughing, um, you know, not not 
audibly, I was laughing um, so hard that I was shaking the pew, and um, I had to I had to leave because I acted like I was crying, but I went outside and I to my car and just laughed as hard as I could. And then I went back in and ate a turkey sandwich. It was great. I think Pop would have loved it. Um, Love the show. You guys are fucking hilarious. (laughs) Bye. I am so jealous of her. Why? Because like those solo laughs alone where you like start. I can't even remember the last time I had one. I I love that feeling of uncontrollable laughter. It's so. But what about with yourself? That's cool. That's even rarer. It's hard to, it's usually you have a partner that's egging your laughter that's on. That's fun too. But um, it it uh, it does feel good. You know, the good news is that laughing and crying look physically very similar. So probably no one was the wiser. It reminded me though of a, of a I was at an AA meeting once many years ago in, in Marin. And we're like a group of us from Oakland came out. So we already kind of, it's kind of a ritzy part of Marin. So we already kind of looked like, and not that we didn't belong, but we definitely were like people noticed that there were kids, young people there that at this really affluent meeting. And this woman was speaking, this really rich woman. And she was like, um, I remember this so well. She was like, and no, I didn't have children that I neglected. And no, I, I didn't have, you know, I didn't steal from my parents. But when I looked in the eyes of my horse, she was talking about her horse, that her stabled horse, mm-hmm. and how sad her horse looked at her because of the way she was drinking. <laughs> and my friend Breeze was sitting in the thing next to me, and he, she was like about to cry. And he laughed so, it was silent, and he laughed so loud. <laughs> I mean, like uproarious laughter. And the, the, everybody was like, it was pretty horrifying and inappropriate, but also very, very funny because this woman was like, I knew when I looked in my horse's eyes that I wasn't <laughs> living right. And this guy came up to him after the meeting and was just like, yeah, do you like the meeting? I remember this. He, and to Breeze, he goes, you like the meeting? It's like, uh, yeah. He goes, you think it was funny? And then he go, Breeze looked at him and he just go, he got really kind of mad. He goes, you know what? There are certain psychological reactions that don't have to do with choice, that are not choice-based, but in fact are, are uh, reaction-based. Laughter is one such psychological reaction, and I could not control it. And also, we don't have horses in Oakland. And he turned around and walked out of the room. Is Breeze his birth name? It is. For real? For real. Okay, I don't believe you, but... It is. I like it. Well, we'll give him a call sometime. Okay, let's do it. We'll, let's we'll take a horse up to Oakland and see how he's doing. <laughs> Should we play another secret? Yeah. Hey, Mosa and Mama Natasha. I was just listening to you guys. Um, I was just updating as a secret. So I was updating my resume and I was writing all the volunteer work that I did. And I put in there how I used to volunteer in the soup kitchen for many years. And I tell people about it sometimes when they like talk about volunteer work or whatever. But actually, I was doing community service of like 300 hours for multiple DUIs. Um, that's why I was actually there. I mean, it wasn't like <laughs> that thing that I was there. I was actually helping somebody, but it was community service, not like actual volunteer work out of the goodness of my heart. Um, so, yeah, that's my secret. Peace out. I feel like this is a lie I would have told. I'm for it. I mean, it's like if you go to prison and you get a college degree, did you not get a college degree? You yeah. got the college degree. So if you do volunteer at a soup kitchen, well, the volunteer part's a bit of a lie. But if you are compulsed to go to, compelled to go to a soup kitchen, you did, you did soup kitchen stuff. Yeah, I really think that anything you can do to sort of like create empathy within yourself. I think traveling is really good. I think volunteer work, it doesn't matter what brought you there. Getting it, four DUIs, anything you can do. <laughs> I think it's good. I mean, definitely the DUIs, that's bad. DUIs are bad. Soup kitchen, But she good. probably learned her lesson. Yeah, well, we don't know, but she definitely served that soup. I, I just would. feel like everything is a hustle. I've never understood these people in like, these people who like have a famous dad and are like, I changed my name because I wanted to know that I'd made it on my own name. And I'm like, who cares? Hollywood, the the world, everything is so profoundly unfair and meaningless that why not just find success however you can get it? 
Like, I don't care. Oh, I, I didn't want to cheat on a test, so I failed out of school. I mean, I don't know. No, I take it back. Now I'm thinking <laughs> of it. You got to have some ethics. But anyway. I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm for it. I want to think of ways that I can volunteer this season, this year. I think... The, that's what that's another thing about Hanukkah. Hanukkah re- really isn't about like giving back, but like what do you mean? Well, hold on, hold on. Christmas, you know, I was in a Christmas carol my whole life, and like it's all about like Scrooge coming to terms. Like he's just like all oh, the no prisons, all the no workhouses. Why don't the poor people just go feed themselves? <laughs> Honey, that's a story by Charles Dickens. That's I know, not the but Christmas it's holiday entwined with. I mean, they in the theater that I grew up in in Rockford, Illinois. Every single year, that was. That I did 50 performances of. You're it. saying so like, like Christmas spirit. Yeah. Like what is the Christmas spirit? And it's about you learn from these plays and from, you know, stories. It's about giving. And I feel like, you know, anyway, my point is if any now that Moshe is letting me have a bush and I'm going to feel oh, like oh, boy. <laughs> there's. A, well, I just want to be able to instill that kind of spirit in my daughter in terms of like, let's go out and try wait to help some minute, people. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're talking about bringing home a Hanukkah bush and infusing her with Christmas spirit? No, 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 not no, Christmas no, no. spirit. You bring home the bush, she says bah humbug. That's the deal. No, it's not Christmas spirit. It's you, just the spirit of hell. There is a, there's actually a season of giving. I don't know if you've heard of that, Moshe, well, but I know it's that not there's, spring. I know that there's a reason for the season. <laughs> no, but I mean, no one, if you think of like, what season do you like try to give back? It's like the holidays. Well, right? Me, you just did it. You just gave a bunch of turkeys to people who couldn't afford turkeys. Well, that's because I believe in the message of Thanksgiving much more than Chris, Christmas. I believe that when you arrive on a continent that is you've never been to before, you plant a flag of your home nation and say, this is ours now. I know that was a joke. Well, it was a joke, Natasha, and I understand what you're saying. And I like the, I, I actually love the whole, the vibe around the holidays. It's not like Hanukkah's like, and then we give back. They're it's not like, like Chris- no, we're going to eat fried food and no, 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 no. spin the dreidel. No, 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 no. Uh, there's Buy nothing. The oil. There is nothing inherent in the holiday of Christmas that is about giving back. It That's is, not true. There is nothing inherent in the holiday of Christmas that's about giving back. What has happened as a result of Chris, of Christmas being this annual celebration is that this idea of Christmas spirit has has come around. And so and that's cultural. That's not about Christmas is about Jesus Christ's birth. Well, oh, I guess maybe the wise men gave gifts. Mm-hmm. Is that part of it? I don't know. I guess I was I really didn't pay attention. My point to is school. the point I'm trying to make is regardless of what the mythology of Hanukkah uh, has does or doesn't uh, support with like giving everybody's around during the christmas the the holiday season so jews give back in the in i'm not saying jews don't of course i'm just saying it's like sometimes with christmas maybe that's why you 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 start giving back at thanksgiving every year you send these turkeys because you don't get to express yourself in that way you know, like the Laugh Factory, it's always like Christmas time, come help us serve the homeless. You know, it's like, that's like a famous time. And also, you know, I think one of the best parts about Christians is that they like turn the other cheek and they're like, they are really like when they're at their best, you can also like celebrate what the best qualities of Christians are. Obviously not when they're raping children. Wait, what? But, like, How did any of this happen? <laughs> I'm not going against the, how did child rape get brought up? <laughs> All I want is a Red Rider BB gun. <laughs> No, I agree with you. Christmas is a beautiful time of year. I think it's really nice. I'm not against Christmas. I just don't celebrate it. But maybe there's a way what he's saying, the guy we just talked to, the academic. Oh, wow. You liked him, huh? Maybe there's a way to like, because like nobody wants, who wants their kid to believe in Santa Claus? That seems so Honey, dated. Honey, if you brought me. Nobody two, wants religion. If you brought I don't me want two religion. choices. Yeah. And you said, one, we get a lavender bush. Two, every year we go volunteer and help other people, uh, down and out people celebrate Christmas, uh, you know, find a way to have a, a Christmas meal or, or buy uh, poor families, um, uh, get them, uh, you know, like gift cards or something so that they can get their kids toys. I'm going to choose the option two every day of the week. Let's just do that then because I don't I'm, I'm think in. ornaments are going to hang off of lav- a lavender bush is small. So that's what we'll tell the families too. We'll say, look, 
We were going to do a Hanukkah bush, but we're we Jews real- for Christmas for other people. I love that. I'm straight up. That now that's a that is a uh, something I could get behind. And but then we could teach that to our kids. I'll even say we do celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas by helping other people celebrate Christmas. Okay. But we have to tell the families when we give them the gift card or or the food or whatever, we have to tell them, "Listen, we were going to do a Hanukkah bush, and then we realized that the that the structure of the lavender branch wouldn't support the weight of an of a <laughs> <laughs> ornament ergo we're here helping you if we had any other way were a lavender a slightly stiffer plant you wouldn't be getting this toys r us gift certificate but because it is weak we are strong well if anyone has any hot tips on how we can use our podcast or our selves or some of our money to help because right now it's a hard time to give of your time because it's i don't really want to go to a soup kitchen right now right right right. obviously it's covid yeah so i think that it would be nice to know about some other ways to volunteer so anyway if anyone has any tips please dm me. i actually think chelsea was do had something like that our, our old friend chelsea peretti let's call her right now i'm <laughs> just kidding guys we're gonna move on and we're gonna do, we're gonna celebrate christmas the old-fashioned way by helping people Love it. What do you think? One more secret? Want to do a call? Let's do a call. I think that's a good idea. Okay. We're going to call, honey. Yeah. We're going to call Taylor in Missouri. Hello? Taylor. Taylor. Hi. How are you? Is this Natasha and Moshe? No. Who's that? Oh. (laughs) <laughs> yes it is oh, hello it's us taylor how are you what's missouri uh, like i'm so good what a joy our uh it's got it's it's got its ups and downs oh you mean that arch <laughs> oh i've been there that's <laughs> st louis yeah sorry yeah I i've been to st it's louis claim to fame. uh but it went to that I, city museum you ever been to that city museum no but i've been to the mega bus stop at in st louis <laughs> Well, that's that's, it. that's almost the same. They're pretty comparable. You know what's really good is <laughs> going there in the summer. I went in the summer to do stand up in St. Louis, and I just remember the weather and you know just being like we went on carriage rides, my mom and I with my kid, and it was really kind of like St. Louis is a really cute city. I don't even think you live in St. Louis, Aww. do you, Taylor? I don't live in yeah, St. I could, Louis. I was getting but... a vibe based on that mega bus comment. But I'll, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Taylor. The last time I was in St. Louis. There was both mm-hmm. both a Jimmy Buffett and an NRA convention in my hotel happening simultaneously. Oh. Yikes. So um, lucky you. Anyway, all that aside, <laughs> Nelly, Chingy. No, wait, Chingy's not from St. Louis. It doesn't really matter. The point is we'd like to know why you called. <laughs> yeah. Uh thanks so much for taking my call. So I have a problem with a friend. Um, so my friend is dating and on the apps and really putting herself out there and um, she's going through all these like jumping through all these hoops uh, by texting these guys and uh, talking to them on the phone for weeks before agreeing to meet up with them in person and then once they meet in person these guys who she's developed an emotional connection with um, they are not interested anymore so I thought she was just having like a bad string of luck with guys but recently she showed me her dating profile and um, I, I noticed that all of her profile photos are heavily altered. Like they, um, <laughs> <laughs> they've got heavy filters from like Snapchat and things or they are like touched up. And I, I like very casually was just like, oh, are, are, did you face tune for these? And she goes, yeah, but you know, it's kind of like expected. You're like, everybody else does that. So my question to you guys is, do I even say anything? Or like, if I do, should I, how do I tell my beautiful, gorgeous friend that maybe the reason these guys are turned off after meeting her is because she doesn't look like her photos in her profile. Mm, this is good. Well, she might be attracting <laughs> more superficial type guys who like a certain type of like doctored look, you know, like it doesn't seem that off that you say she's this, you know, beautiful and natural person. Well, that was a, she was being really nice. Right. Okay. Well, still it's <laughs> like, I, I, 
definitely you could I, I what I would do if it was my friend and saw it and kind of gulped when I saw the pictures I'd be like you should just try something where it's just like really you like what are things where you just like feel like yourself like really just like take mm. very honest pictures put them up there see what happens that's what I would say I wouldn't be mm. like you know you don't you're not you're more of a seven and these pictures <laughs> are like a nine and a half <laughs> I you know what's funny <laughs> She, she, um, I, I would say like the filters are such a norm. Like, uh, we, I remember she took a selfie with me and, uh, showed it to me afterward. And I was like, oh my gosh, this doesn't even look like us. And she goes, oh yeah, I just have this filter that I use. So, but I mean, yeah, I could ask her just say, have you, I mean, don't you, do you take any photos without filters i don't even know if it's any of my business and i guess i am making a big assumption by well thinking yes. that maybe these guys are turned off by it no but you're I right you're 100 percent right that is what's happening <laughs> guaranteed that's what's happening and they even if they're not turned off by the way she does look they're probably turned off by the fact that they've been bait and switched that they're getting a false version of someone which is in itself regardless of how cute the person in front of you is you're feeling you're feeling like weirded mm -hmm. out by the fact that they weren't honest but wait i don't think you sh should say what you said. You should replay this episode when it comes out and say exactly what Natasha just said because it was like perfect. It was like the reason these guys are not going for you is because these filters make you look like someone that would attract superficial guys that like a doctored look. Oh, and that was like perfect to me. It's it's like the most neutral version of be yourself. And then the next thing you said was do you it was I can't even repeat there's not I have nothing to add. I just think exactly what Natasha said was perfect. It was like th that is what it is. I see. Do you have any photos that look more like you because you're so beautiful and you want to attract people that that, that love that are attracted to you? Also, I just want to say have mercy on your friend because I have, have a friend mercy. who is a playmate and she's a oh. make, she's a makeup artist. She's one of the most attractive people I've ever met and the guys act like that to her too. <laughs> Really? <laughs> She's more gorgeous than her pictures. I'm just saying it's like it's rough out there. Yeah. You know, and, and I think because of that, it's almost like you want to just kind of put your foot forward. That's just like really you. There's only one you, right? Like it's like you can't really try to be. How are you going to be in a in a sustained relationship with someone who thinks like your chin is a little smaller than it is or something <laughs> or whatever angle you're, you know what I mean? Like, I don't I know. I mean, look, I've been in this situation where you show up and you go, oh my God, this is not the person that I agreed to go out with. I mean, and it's superficial and it's even piggish, but it's also like, hey, it's kind of understandable. If you were sold one thing and that's who you agreed to meet and then you go, oh, you were showing me some false version of yourself. But I think the my the primary answer is this is not your business and very well could blow up in your face. And I think Natasha said it perfectly, but it very well mm -hmm. could be interpreted as listen, you're you're not as cute as these pictures, so why don't you try being a little bit more honest? So find a way to manipulate this conversation into where it's appropriate for you to say what Natasha said. And also if you want to make her yeah. feel if you want to make her feel better, you can tell her the story of one of my other friends who was having really hard time dating and finally was like, okay, this guy's in a wheelchair, but I'm going to go on a date with him. And she went on a date with him for dinner and he was like really arrogant the entire time. And then she said, he said he had to go to the bathroom and then wheeled on out of there. <laughs> and she was just oh, stood up. At it was the more than she was expecting. No, I mean, he just like pretended like he was going to the bathroom and left the, the diner. <laughs> so, so oh. I'm just saying, like, it gets, it's bad. It gets bad. It, <laughs> Natasha. what? I'm just saying. You want to cut that out? No, okay. I, I don't know. I can't tell, actually. But listen. I mean, she, she was like on the fence about going on a date with someone in a wheelchair. I don't know. I mean, it happens. And then and he she was finally like, was like, I'm going to do it. And he just hit a wheelie. It was like, Arr! I'm out of here. And he <laughs> lied to her during dinner and left her with the fucking check. Yeah. And she was like, bitch, That's I was terrible. already like not really sure I wanted to go on a date with you. 
Well, it's hard. Because I didn't know there. if I was attracted to you. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Taylor? Are you gonna Are you gonna have the conversation? I mean, I really like the idea of thinking like, hey, maybe these altered photos that you think need to be altered are attracting superficial guys. That's like so maybe good. we and, and need to show a different side of you. I think that's a good call. And the other trick to talking to your friends about stuff like that is don't offer it. Once she mentions, you know, you're not like, oh, we need to talk. Um, the pictures that you're posting. <laughs> I think it's better. It's like once if you're, she's a good friend and your instinct is that you should probably like, you kind of have an idea in your head. Wait for her to bring it up and then just kind of really casually say it. And if she wants to take the lead, she can. Man, Natasha, you're nailing it. Next time she complains to you about her dating life, you say, yeah, you know, I was thinking about your profile and then say what, Nat- and then say exactly what Natasha said. And then your friend will find love. It's guaranteed. And in the meantime, I'm going to look up this playmate of <laughs> Natasha's and see what that's all about. All right. Well, good luck. And uh, I think it's good that you tell your, I think friends are there to help us, but you just don't want to like overstep. Yeah. Like I wasn't even sure if it's any of my business, but uh, that I think putting, uh, opening up to different types of guys is a good way to put it. So yeah. I love um, this. yeah. Great. You guys give such good advice. I'm glad I called. I was a little nervous. But, oh, good. Well, thank um, you for calling. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Okay. Uh, bye. Awesome. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Natasha, that was really good. Nothing against people in wheelchairs. No. I'm just saying the girl that I knew was on the fence about this guy because he's in a wheelchair. That's a lot to take on. Sure. For a first date. And he looked at her and he's like, eh, that's a lot to take on too. (laughs) 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 Well, she said the reason, the also the reason why she didn't want to date him, he seemed really cocky in their texts. Mm -hmm. You know, but she was like, okay, I'll give it a try because nothing else is working. You know, people try to challenge themselves. Yeah. And dating sucks, but it's also kind of fun. What can you do? I'm glad I'm not dating anymore. You know why? Why? Because I love you. I love you too. 